A few years ago, specifically in 2012, scientists were looking into the skies and looking at various stars in our galaxy trying to find more exoplanets. This is a method that they often use to find exoplanets called the transit method, where they essentially look for when a planet crosses the star and makes it go dim for a little bit and then the star reappears. Now, they've actually discovered something really amazing, something that when I've read a few months ago, my jaw just dropped and I said, oh my god. That is amazing. Today I'm going to tell you what it is and hopefully you enjoy this video. Welcome to What The Math. Now this is actually a new version of Space Engine. This is RC2 of the pre-release of 9.7.4 beta version that has added quite a lot of new stars, but also a lot of cool effects. Uh, specifically, if you look at the shining here, the, the actual starlight, it's so much, much more beautiful than it used to be. There's a lot of other um, effects that we'll discuss later on when they actually release this beta version, but let's actually not talk about this just yet and explore the galaxy. So, first of all, where was this amazing star discovered? It was in the um, vicinity of constellation of Centaurus. We're actually going to go and check out Centaurus A central black hole for a second, because I've never been there before, and I'm sure you haven't either. Let's go check it out. Welcome to Centaurus uh, constellation and welcome to Centaurus central black hole. Let's go take a look at it. It seems to have a few stars. Oh my god, there's quite a lot of stars orbiting around it. Let's actually disable that for a second. I got a little bit scared there. And so here it is. Here's the beautiful black hole of Centaurus. Um, if, you, if you know anything about black holes, if you go inside of them, things get really, really, really strange. And this is actually the new blue shift effects that you're witnessing right now. Uh, anyway, so we're not here to see the black hole. We're going to talk about black holes in some other video. We're here to see the star by the name of Once Wasp J1407. Now, this is not the exact name of this star. This is actually a shortened name, but let's just go with that because that's what it's abbreviated as and this is what it's known as today. Uh, SWASP stands for Wide Angle Search for Planets. This is another telescope that usually looks for planets. And as you can see, it also has a planet around it. Now, let's go check out the star first, and then I'm going to show you what we're here to see. And so this is the star, Once Wasp J1407. It's an orange dwarf. It's only a few million years old. It's essentially very similar to our sun. It's very similar in size and brightness and everything else. A little bit lighter than the sun. It's about 90% of the mass. But it's basically like our sun when it was much, much younger. It's essentially a toddler sun. Now, why am I even here then? It seems to be like a normal solar system, right? 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 So, I guess I'm not sure what I'm doing here, because uh, it seems to be quite... Oh, what the... What is that? What? What is that? What the... Math is that? Welcome to Once Wasp J1407b, the largest planetary body that was discovered in the recent few years with the largest rings around it. So this is why we're actually here. We're here to observe this incredible object. This is actually a gas giant and it's right there in the middle. It's ridiculously tiny compared to these rings. And this is an actual object that was discovered in 2012 and specifically more in detail in 2015 when we actually realized what we we're looking at. This object is essentially a gas giant um, that's about 20 times the mass of Jupiter, possibly a little bit smaller, possibly a little bit bigger, because we're not exactly sure how big it is. But what we, we are certain about is that this object has a tremendously large rings uh, around it. It's, it's essentially the largest rings we could even imagine. This by itself is approximately 0.6 astronomical units, which is 90 million kilometers or about 60 percent the distance of earth from the sun so if this was earth sun would be somewhere right here this is how big how incredibly large these rings are now you'll notice that not only are these rings massive they also seem to have these large gaps between them and this is where scientists believe there are actually uh, moons um around this ga uh, gas giant so we now believe that these ring gaps represent the formation of different moons. Unfortunately, they're not shown here, but uh, they, this is what we kind of speculate. 
Now, how did we actually discover this? And how do we even know that this is actually a ring system? So I'm gonna show you how. I'm gonna go to the object. We're gonna turn around it for a second, even though it's so beautiful, I just can't, can't keep my eyes off it. And we're gonna stare at the sun for a while. Not the sun, sorry, the star. We're gonna stare at the star. Look at this beautiful uh, nebula in there as well. Um, and so this is how they know for a fact that this is a ring system. When this planet was passing in front of the star, there was a sudden dim in the light, like just like you see right now. And then it started happening more and more, more often and more often. Then there were a, a little bit stronger dims and then suddenly it disappeared completely. And it was only about 90% visible. And then it sort of came out again and had a, a, a bit of these blinks again on the other side. They've, uh, they've actually thought about it for a few years or, and after about a couple of years, wrote a paper describing this ring system. Essentially, this is how we know that the only explanation uh, to this sort of a dimming of the star is if this large gas giant actually has a very, very large uh, ring set around it. Now, what it means is, well, it's actually something really, really incredible. We've actually discovered the newly forming gas giant system. Our Jupiter, if you if you were to look at it in any of the games uh, like Space Engine or Universe Sandbox 2, you would obviously know that... And I, let's actually just go in there and take a look at it for a second, because we can always come back here afterwards. So if you look at Jupiter, you would notice that we don't really have a strong ring base. We have a bit of rings, but they're not very strong. But what we do have is these um, moons. We have a lot of moons orbiting around Jupiter. And so what we now think is that essentially what you were just looking at is the early um, gas giant system where um, these rings later sort of condense into these moons, specifically the large uh, Galilean moons of Jupiter that we now know today, today as Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa. Now, this is actually pretty fascinating. So essentially, we've taken a look at the early solar system, what solar system may have been a long time ago. But the difference between this uh, or our solar system and this unusual solar system is that, well, these rings in total mass are actually larger than the mass of Earth. And so it's several times larger than the total mass of all of the moons of Jupiter. In other words, if these were to form into actual moons, there would be quite a lot of moons here, possibly several hundreds or maybe even more moons together. And of course, the gas giant itself is 20 times larger than Jupiter, so it's by itself a very unusual planet as well. But luckily, in Space Engine, we can actually approach it relatively safely and even land on it. Let's go inside this gas giant just to check it out. Look at this beauty. Okay, that's it. I think that's that's as far as we can go. Uh, so we're inside the upper atmosphere now, and we can kind of see all of these really cool effects, sort of similar to northern light effects um, on Earth. All right, so let's get out of here. And this is essentially what it would look like from the really, really... Um, upper layers of atmosphere, where technically you could actually build a cloud city like in Star Wars. Uh, we could actually live in these cities if we could one day manage to build a city there. And just look at the size of these rings. This is incredibly huge. Enormous. This is absolutely ginormous. What else do we actually know about this system? Well, we know that it takes uh, this particular star quite a, a few years to make it around its uh, central star. And where is that star, by the way? There it is. So it actually takes it um, over 10 years to make it ar um, around. And so one year on this planet would be close to 10 years. And because it's so far away from, um, from the star, the temperatures here would be relatively low. But the actual gas giant itself, because of its mass, would actually produce quite an, an, a lot of heat from the inside, including a lot of radiation, actually. And so the temperature, the predicted temperature here is about 308 uh, degrees Celsius. So this is actually a little bit less hot than um, Venus, but a little bit more hot than Mercury. Uh, and this is, of course, because a lot of the energy comes from within the gas giant. And this uh, planet by itself would be very, very dangerous and very radioactive to us as well. 
And so living on this gas giant would be quite impossible or quite difficult. And even if there was um, an actual large moon around it somewhere, um, living on that moon would be quite dangerous as well, simply because of the radiation that uh, this gas giant would emit. Um, this gas giant is very, very close to being a brown dwarf or essentially becoming a very, very small star. And so because of that, it actually creates so much heat on the inside. Now, what I wanted to also mention is that um, the scientists observing this gas giant actually encourage various amateur astronomers to keep looking at it and to actually report when they see uh, these sort of dimming gaps. Specifically, what they want to do or what they are asking people to do is to use their um, astronomer kits or their telescopes, uh, because you can actually see the star in the telescope, uh, to kind of look at it and whenever they see the star disappear to inform the American Association of Variable Star Observers, also known as AAVSO, to basically tell them that they, you've witnessed the dimming and that there might be another transit because they're actually really, really interested in the system. This is essentially like looking into the really young solar system before all of the moons, before all of the planets were completely formed. And so today, uh, the scientists believe that this is not actually a stable system. This is actually um, a so-called proto-exosatellite disk in the process of forming satellites or moons for this gas giant. And that a long-term stable ring system is going to basically be um, evolved later on when uh, this gas giant and all of this material sort of solidifies into various moons. But you know what, nevertheless, this is still a pretty awesome system. I think this is probably one of the coolest systems I've seen in quite a long time. And even from a distance, look at how big these rings are. You can easily see them even relatively far away from, from the star. And so to me, this is probably one of the coolest discoveries of the last few years. And it's definitely something that you should tell your friends about and share this video with them because this is awesome, as is science, as is space. And anyway, so this was a star and a system called One Swasp J1407, and it's a really, really cool planet that we've discovered only three years ago. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support, guys. As always, please subscribe if you still haven't liked this video, if you've enjoyed watching it, and don't forget to share this awesome little star and its awesome little planet with your friends. Game you later. I'll see you in the next video, and as always, bye-bye.